Okay, so friggin, uh, I got a little bit of a start on plywood in the friggin' program last night, but you know, I didn't have my saw horses out, so I just cut those, like the tubifer corner antlers, friggin, uh, you know, standing up on its edge, just like this sort of thing. I was just like grabbing it, and I friggin, you know, I got her marked out for the next cut, but uh, just had to notchy 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 so i just got to do these two shells and the top one are no need and i already got one of the sheets up there but my wires and my bullshit i gotta figure out with that a little bit and take this kickstand off of there but uh she was a little bit wampa say it didn't want to cooperate so i had to get the old clamp guys out and just cinch her to the wall and then i put some cap toms in there and different things so friggin' right She'll be friggin' good to go now, I bet. But I gotta go friggin' check the mail. It's friggin' just after lunch or whatever. I friggin' uh, spend all morning friggin' on the phone with different dicks, lawyers, and friggin' uh, friggin' offices and type of shits and all type of different stuff, so. But I'm getting her all figured out or whatever, so I'll just have to friggin' uh, get all these estimates, get everything that I can get done, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, Pliant's messaged me this morning saying something about uh, getting orbit or something so i don't know if he'll show up today or not but holy shit the freaking middle of the yard snow jump is gone it's freaking gone boys look at this the fridge jumps freaking gone too son of a bitch oh we got something from china and something from health canada son of a bitch Oh, I'm going to be talking about some of this uh, bullshit from Health Canada on tonight's episode of the THC, if you are if you care to listen. For again, uh, oh shit, I'm getting a phone call. Beg my part, that was the uh, $300 an hour lawyer just um, letting me know that I can get reimbursed for all costs due to this friggin' uh, horse shit. But uh, yeah, this is uh, for the uh, MMRA. It says it's important to note that all dried marijuana, marijuana plants, or marijuana seeds in your possession that were produced or obtained under the terms of the MMRA must be destroyed prior to the expiry date on the ATP or PUPL. Beg my part. So anyways, if you want to get more into that, I'm just going to put it right there at the set of the THC and uh, we'll dig into that later. But holy shit, is this ever bullcrap. I think the RCMP is coming, boys. And this was the other thing, I'm addicted to like buying stuff on the internet, so this is just like a, like a little check valve. Son of a bitch there, beg my pardon, uh, handy, handy unit to have it is. So anyways, here's an email I got from a dick, uh, friggin' was gonna come out and then ended up just watching the, the video and figures he, he didn't need to come out, so. Anyways, that's him's email. See, that's part of the problem too, is I friggin' had a hard time getting anybody to come out here to even look at the roof. So when the friggin' roof did come out, I was like, oh, okay, you know, you, you, you showed up. That's a good sign, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, you know, all he seen was dollar signs, you know what I mean? So anyways, I'm gonna get uh, some lunch into me and probably a Yasmin Sagrit and get this done. Beg my part. Oh, friggin' right. Got my lunch in myself. Friggin' uh, just got off the phone with a company called First On Sight. It's like a disaster cigarette butt place or whatever. I got their number from the air testing guy or whatever. So he's gonna come over tomorrow between 1 and 2 and, you know, tell me what it's gonna cost to sort of get rid of this mold and what they gotta do and this and that. And maybe I'll make a YouTube video about it and you'll learn how to get rid of mold and different things and how much it costs and stuff. Beg my part. Anyways, I got the friggin' one piece cut. I'm gonna cut that piece and cut that piece. And then so I'm just gonna mark out this one using that one. And then put the other one in and was was a bling bling cut cut. And was was a bling bling. My best friend from UPS. He's a bit of a dick, but he always brings me stuff. Oh, a dick, boys. Sinister Diesel. You sons of bitches. Hey. Oh crap, I have wanted one of these for a long time. Yeah, what else did they give me? Oh yeah, the friggin, the add-onable friggin, expandable friggin, uh, EGT sensitivity friggin modulator. All right, so we're sitting here in Big Secret. I friggin, uh, just plugged them in. Next thing you know, it's friggin asking me all type of stuff. So I better pay at least a little bit of attention. Oh 
sound deck is the vehicle Hello, one pug life. transmission. No. Oh, dick, boys! Engine coolant temperature. We need to change the uh, polarity to centigrade. So right on, I just friggin' set it up for six cigarette mode. Friggin' it's showing my battery voltage at 11.6, so really didn't need that stupid thing in the dash, but, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I can friggin' cigar it out something else there. You know what I mean? I gotta get that EGT sensor in there. Some of you guys saying friggin' drill it in the driver's side friggin' manifold, and others is saying, you know, cause of mouth. Well, anyways, that's where I mounted her, right where my friggin' stupid dollar store cell phone thing used to be, so I'll have to friggin' mount it so I'm more zealous, say I'll put that up here like this, and then I just won't be able to see anything. It'll be awesome. Alright, so here's the friggin', uh, the wire that goes from, uh, the back of the friggin' for frig saxer down to the, uh, modulator, so all this bit would stay under the hood, I expect. Screw that guy into the manifold, chooch that guy up and around, and then you got... You plug it in there, and then if you want to add other shit later, you can take that off and frig sacks more onto there. And then it'll be more awesomer. But I gotta decide if I'm gonna friggin' try to tap, tap the manifold with, you know, magnets and grease and frig sacks and, and this and that and stuff and risk friggin' shooting friggin' flakes up my turbo. Or friggin' just pull the friggin' pipe down and friggin', uh, you know, tap, you know, well, a little threaded cigarette onto the fr frig saxer and... You know what I mean? But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But anyways, I was just friggin' uh, cutting up my last bird there. I gotta put some screws in the top and this and that, and then I can start firing shit on here. Yeah. Oh, friggin' rights. I should have filmed myself getting uh, getting that tall blue one up there. That would have been that would have been pretty funny to see. I bet. Friggin' only like 600 pounds, and I'm using like the little steppy stool guy. Totally can't reach. Almost wiped out. Killed myself. But anyways, that's just about enough of that horse shit. I got my friggin' uh, my fanty pant gauge, and I do got to go pick up some firewood. So I'm gonna see if I can arrange that. If I can get two birds stoned at once, and it's worth opening the door, I'll open the door. So this is freaking right on. Got the RPMs, got the volts, got the freaking engine coolant temp, and the IAT. I don't know what that is. Ambient air temperature or internal air temperature, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, onwards, we'll take him for a shit stink and see how Helms does. Ah, oh, freaking right. Big Dirty loves him's high idle, eh? Yeah. So I got engine coolant temp and engine oil temp up, and they're both the same. Oh, I just pulled out of the drive words and we're already up a couple degrees. So I'll just keep an eye on them. That's what I got them for. See the uh, PSI is, seems to be working. Yeah, that's way more awesome. Oh fuck, I'm supposed to grab a trailer. I guess I'm putting the wood in the back of the truck. Son of a bitch. It's coming up to the stop sign there, the end of the road. Friggin, uh, not too bad, not too bad. Still pretty close. I'm not sure what the exact cigarette is about the uh, whole operation there, but uh, the oil cooler inside the top of the engine there has like coolant going through it and, and engine oil going through it, right? So I'm assuming that uh, if the engine oil is either hotter, yeah, it's hotter than the coolant or something. I, I don't know how it works, but if that friggin' oil cooler is blocked off in the coolant side and oil's still able to go through there, it's not, you know, dissipating the heat as good. I would think the oil would get a lot hotter than the, than the coolant, but uh, if I am mistaken, please let me know. Can't even fucking see it. Oh, it's staying pretty even. Pressure gauge is just about five. I'll have to 
change it to friggin' kilometers, but uh, 58 mile an hour, 59, beg my pardon. Well, I was pissing around with it. I couldn't figure out how to switch it from uh, miles to kilometers, but uh, I got a speedometer. Plus I got my Tom Tom. So I just changed her to tranny temp. So I got uh, coolant temp, oil temp, tranny temp. So that's way more Osner's frag. Well, I forgot uh, somebody was coming to give me an estimate for something. I, I can't even remember what it was, but he just called me, told me that he was at my front door. So I just been giving her friggin' back home. And uh, that's, what, that's where we're at. So not too bad, not too bad. ES size, uh, maybe eight, looks like. Beg my pardon. Oh, beg my pardon. He's, he's, he's been waiting. I apologize. Okay, so uh, this guy's here to do an estimate on the roof and the insulation. And I just come into this room to show him. And it's really dark outside. But, uh, oh crap, it's not going to focus. But I mean, you can see it. You can see it even though it's blurry, right? Can you see where it's leaking, boys? Can, can you see where it's leaking, right? So, uh, here, let me get my flashlight out quick. You can see, you can see the daylight, right? You can see the daylight, look it. I mean, you can barely tell the difference between my light on and my light off, eh? But, uh, so yeah, I don't need to pour any water in there. It's, it's quite obvious that's exactly what's happened. The guy was only here for friggin' 10 seconds and uh, first thing out of his mouth was, oh, what's that, PTO? That stuff's garbage. What about the, uh, the light coming in there? You figure that's where all the water's coming in probably? And I don't know, I haven't been on the roof, but you know, daylight through a roof isn't a good sign. That's not sure. good, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. All right, so we'll <laughs> see what this guy has to say and uh, we'll get an estimate from him too. And, but I gotta go get firewood, beg my pardon. Anyways, I don't know where the hell this come from, but I was outside wandering around with Buddy looking up in the, you know, in the roof department there, and that was laying on the ground. Redneck fission lure, some sort of a friggin' mermaid. Son of a bitch. Well, anyways, friggin', uh, went up there and had a look at it. He says, uh, he's heard a lot of problems about the, this type of a roof, but he's never seen one in such bad condition that was so new. So that's very friggin' disappointing. But uh, I guess it's better he says that than saying, you know, like, oh, this is a fantastic job. What's your problem? You know what I mean? So, anyways. Oh, Dick, there's the old lady. Stop behind a school bus. But anyways, the friggin' uh, gauges are still reading, you know, pretty, pretty close. Pretty friggin' close. And they stayed that way the whole time I was driving, as far as I could tell, anyways. Well, for frick's sake, another roofer just called me, said he's on his way, and uh, I'm back out freaking going to get wood again, but my old lady's home now, so I just told him, you know, she's home, this is the situation, you know, give me an estimate on replacing or repairing if you think you can, and uh, different things, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to go pick up some firewood, freaking this and that. One thing I forgot to mention that's more Austin's frig about uh, this edge insight uh, freaking little for frig sacks or gauge that I got here is that I can, uh, um, you know, test the, the each injector, like the firings of the injector and stuff or whatever. I'm going to have to go through the instructions, obviously. I just, you know, wanted it hooked up, go for a rip snot, check everything out. But uh, we're at uh, engine coolant 166, uh, oil temperature is uh, 172, and transmissions 135. Not too bad, not too bad. Another thing uh, that I forgot to mention was there's a little uh, backup camera input in the back of it. I'm not sure how that works, whether you gotta, you know, it probably can tell if you got it in reverse or not by the friggin', you know, the little the frig sacks are under there to, uh, you know, cigarette the program, but... Uh, oh my friggin' shit, it's a Dodge! Okay, we're coming down a little hill. I'm gonna just friggin' punch it. Shit, almost 3,000 RPMs. Goodness. I apologize, Big Dirty. But, uh, yeah, nothing really going up except the coolant pressure. But it's not, you know, going up like it was before when I had the blown head gaskets for sure. And it was like 18 psi because the cap couldn't blow off fast enough, you know. But, uh, yeah. Tell me if you think that's friggin' reasonable. 174, 168, 143. Make my part. Anyway, it's one thing I was thinking about doing, because now I got, uh, I can put another camera up to this guy here, right? 
is uh, put a camera on the front and then have it on a switch because I'm not sure exactly how I'll have to read the instructions, but I should be able to just put it on a switch, switch that thing to think that it's in reverse, because that's what I do with this, right? I just got a switch over here, where is it? Under there, right under the friggin' train horn center, and I just trip the friggin' stereo into thinking it's reverse so I can friggin' watch behind me all the time, right? So I can just, you know, oh, you know, am I too close to this? Boop, flick the switch, okay, I can see, you know, in the front now, right? I don't know, just an idea. Yeah, so I don't know, it seems to be staying pretty pretty consistent uh, or whatever, and the cooling isn't really going up anymore, so I think uh, the only thing left to do is hook up that friggin' EGT sensor and uh, we'll keep an eye on the exhaust gases, son of a bitch. Holy shit, got a load on now, boys. Friggin' rights you do, but uh, I had to get her in the fuckin' nine-wheel pill to get out of the friggin' mud situation there. Not too bad, not too bad, but uh, still got all dirty. Big dirty, all dirty, you know what I mean? So, anyways, we'll see how this friggin' shit goes with the load on, and uh, then we changed. Well, I'm glad I didn't turn around for the uh, second roof dick. He showed up without a ladder, so, uh, I mean, if you show up with a ladder, I might tell you, you know, hey man, don't worry about it, I got one here and stuff, but if you just don't show up with a ladder, that's, that's just dicked. Well, we friggin' we're giving her for about a half hour drive to BBC Rednecks there, so friggin' uh, but yeah, 166 in the coolant, 174 in the friggin' uh, oil, and 150 on the trans, and uh, PSI still under 10, so friggin' rights, boys. I mean, this friggin' thing just makes driving big dirty just, you know, relaxing. It's not it's, it's so stressful, I'm thinking, you know, like, what the hell's wrong with my truck, you know what I mean? But, Nothing. It's just undecked. Beg my pardon. Do got to get that uh, EGT friggin' uh, stick friggin' jabbed into my saw. So let me know what you think. Should I just put it after the turbo? Be easier. Just take that pipe down. Wah, weld a little bung on there. Friggin' and friggin' was was bling bling. But uh, obviously coming right out of friggin' uh, the back friggin' uh, cylinder on the driver's side would probably be the easiest to get to as far as the manifolds would go. But uh, anyways, I'm back. I got a friggin' uh, for friggin' my sack here, so and then we cheached. So, so check this out, my old lady was just leaving and happened to look up and says, oh, you can see daylight out here too. Eh, can you see that? It's not really focusing, but there's a couple spots where daylight's coming, and it's leaked here before too, run all down this wall, but it hasn't done that in a while, but anyways. I gotta still unload all this friggin' uh, wood and stuff out of Big Dirty because I gotta go get Bloke's trailer in the mornings in accordance with uh, scraps up a little bit so I'm gonna get rid of the cars I think. Anyways boys, big big thanks to uh, MKM Customs, Sinister Diesel there on the interwebs friggin' uh, hooking it up with some uh, Edge friggin' uh, Insight friggin' monitor apparatus there so I'll get into friggin' that a little more friggin' on another day but uh, still got a frig sax that uh, that monitor, that sensor antler in the exhaust too. So, you know, g g tell me what you think about uh, how I should do that. Should I just go in the pipe or go in the friggin' manifold? Maybe you know a good video if I do, you know, if this is take the pipe off, well, it's not rocket appliances, but you know, maybe you know a good video that shows you a good ways how to friggin' uh, drill out your manifolds without taking them off different things but uh, magnets and grease and all that kind of crap or whatever right but anyways don't forget to check out one plug up at comment get your decals and your hoser and your nonsense and your gibberish and don't forget to like share or favor the movie because it helps plug one up big time and plug one loves that kind and of course don't forget to check the links in the prescription but anyways there you go boys another dicker plug one production so until tomorrow don't let the watchers get you